Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're going to give everyone just a few seconds to migrate in from the waiting room. All right. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to unlock the hidden energy savings potential in your business. I'm Wayne Staub, and I have the pleasure of being the Chief Business Relations Officer here at NJBIA. Um, with us today is Joe Prusky from PSE and G, and James um, Friedel from uh, NDV. Just a few housekeeping matters before we get started. So today's webinar is also being recorded and will be emailed to you tomorrow, along with the PowerPoint for today's presentation. So be on the lookout for it. If you just can't wait, you can download them right now from the handouts tab. But I'd also like to draw your attention to the questions tab. The speakers would be happy to take your questions at the end. So get them in to me as soon as you can through the, through the chat box. If you have any trouble viewing or hearing during this presentation, don't forget you will automatically be receiving a recording within 48 hours. So if you have to sign out and watch the recording, you won't miss a thing. Here at NJBIA, we do an annual business survey. And every year for the past 10 years, at least, energy cost is a major concern for our members. So we're super excited to have these two gentlemen with us today. So now, without any further ado, gentlemen, please take us away. All right, well, thank you very much, Wayne, for that introduction. introduction and uh, thank you to everyone for joining us this morning. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. Okay, so I hope everyone can see my screen at this point. All right. So yeah, there are a number of topics that we're going to cover to familiarize you with the programs available through PSEG. These are all designed to provide you with access to the most comprehensive portfolio of incentives available and all aimed at reducing your energy efficiency project costs. You'll also be introduced to something called on-bill repayment, which reduces your upfront cost to zero dollars and is a simple addition to any application. So with some of that background and with Wayne taking care of the housekeeping, uh, let's get started. I'm joined this morning by Joe Prusik. Joe is the manager of energy services for the commercial and industrial group within PSE&G. Uh, Joe, if you wouldn't mind providing everyone with a little context as to PSE&G's involvement with the energy sure. efficiency uh, world and reducing energy consumption, that'd be great. Sure, will do. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, this is great to, to be here and, and talk to the group here and all the businesses, you know, PSCNG is very interested in promoting energy efficiency. Um, we got a couple slides to talk, obviously, about what we're doing in the energy efficiency arena. But a couple things I did want to point out. The utilities in New Jersey, PSCNG obviously being one of the utilities, we now run pretty much all the energy efficiency programs that the state previously ran. So we, as your energy partner, want to work with you to help you save energy, reduce your consumption and obviously help save the environment because as we're saving energy we're also combating climate change and some of the things that you're going to hear about i know jim you, you mentioned the on bill refinancing to me this is a new feature in our programs totally new to new jersey we psceng did offer it on a limited basis for programs that we've previously run but when you think of on bill refinancing if you have like an old piece of say mechanical equipment, a chiller, boiler, air conditioner that you're kind of limping along. And even today, you know, on a cold day like this, if you're worried about making it through the, the coldest day, maybe time to think about upgrading your equipment with an energy efficient piece of equipment. And between the incentive and the on-bill refinancing, we're able to help you finance and pay for the entire cost. The on-bill refinancing, we'll, we'll get more into that. There is a repayment obligation on that, and I, I won't steal Jim's thunder too much, but I did want to let you know that there's a lot of good opportunities here. And another big aspect is jobs. You know, we know the economy is, 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 is struggling throughout not just New Jersey, but throughout the whole, whole country, and we're helping build a, a green economy here. So, Jim, maybe you can move to the next slide, please. Okay. Uh, energy, as Wayne 
indicated is one of the largest direct costs for businesses each year. When you think of all the pressures that businesses have to continually grow, increase profitability, navigate this complex technological landscape that we have, businesses are more interested in producing their product, serving their customers, and energy is really thought of, thought of as an overhead and just a cost of doing business. But what if you thought of energy efficiency as an asset? And let me explain that a little bit. Energy efficiency can positively impact your profitability, your productivity, reliability, and safety. Think of, like I mentioned earlier, you have that old piece of equipment, be it an air conditioner, chiller, or maybe you have a uh, something with your, your processes that, that you're working on if you're a large commercial and industrial type of facility. You know, if you can increase the efficiency, you're saving money on your energy efficiency bill, your profitability will go up because your maintenance costs will go down on a newer piece of equipment. You can get more productivity. It's more reliable. It just helps you all around. And in the, you know, safety can also be a factor. Think of if your outside parking lot has inefficient lights and it's a little dimly lit, you can upgrade that real easily through our programs and increase the, the nighttime safety of the people that come and go from your business. So Jim, can you move to the next slide? Thanks. Seems kind of odd to be talking about climate change on such a cold day with this pending snowstorm here, but we, I think we all know and recognize that climate change is upon us and we need to do, do something about it. Um, so one thing that's a, a little odd to think of, we're asked a lot of times, why would my utility want me to use less energy? Don't they make less money if I use less? Well, this is a common misconception. Utilities do make money through a variety of channels. Energy supply and energy delivery are, are, are some of those, but we also need to maintain our critical infrastructure. Rising energy puts a, a strain on our, rising energy use, I should say, puts a strain on our energy infrastructure, making us more susceptible to service interruptions. And with the, all the technology that everyone uses day to day, we service interruptions are something we strive for to, to keep at a bare minimum. Sometimes it's necessary, but uh, we have put in a lot of redundancy in our systems to reduce these interruptions. Our goal is to ensure delivery of reliable energy to our customers who depend on our electricity and natural gas for lighting and heating their homes and businesses. Now also keep in mind, as a regulated public utility, our role is to provide necessary services for our customers we serve. As New Jersey's largest energy provider, we recognize the importance of our role in mitigating the impacts of a warming climate. This is why we're focused on investing cleaner, renewable energy resources. Energy efficiency is a big part of that. And we also have a vision to transform our car to a nearly 100% carbon-free power generation. Part of this is helping our customers save energy in their homes and businesses, and the programs that we're here to talk about are going to enable you to, to do that. So if we can go to the next slide, Jim. Thanks. Our Clean Energy Future program is a billion-dollar commitment over three years to deliver energy efficiency through our to our residential and commercial and industrial customers. The way I like to put it is our suite of programs has something for everyone. Um, we've spent and saved hundreds of millions of dollars for our customers with the programs that we've run, but with this billion dollar commitment, we are really set, setting the stage to do this very large scale. And again, there's something for everyone. If you have, and I'm not going to steal Jim's thunder too much as we go through the programs here, but you're going to learn about all these programs. We have programs that'll help you if you know what you, you need to put in, you want to upgrade your lighting systems, that could be a, a perfect project for our prescriptive program. If you have a more customized type of process that you want to improve the efficiency on, well, maybe that's a good candidate for our, our custom energy efficiency program. If you have building controls or you want to do a, a retro commissioning, which is really a building tune-up, well, we have an ma energy management program to help do that. And we also have direct install programs where we have an open and closed network of trade allies and vendors that work through that to either you can select your own vendor or trade ally or if you're in, unable to, we're able to help and provide one for you. Uh, and we also have an engineered solutions program, which is really a very detailed program where we can help with energy audits, 
on large projects that save a lot of energy. And the, the key to that program is if you have a lot of engineering that needs to go into your project to save energy, we're here to help you do that. So Jim, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to get into some of the program details. Okay, great. Thank you, Joe, for that introduction. And Joe did touch on a number of, of different elements uh, that we'll be touching on a little bit more in detail as we go through now. Uh, one of those areas um, is, is the pre-qualified uh, or prescriptive. And essentially, the Business Energy Saver program delivers incentives for the adoption of energy efficient technologies and certain activities through a few methods and delivery channels. So some technologies, and you'll hear us call them measures, are pre-qualified and have deemed savings associated with them. Uh, so those pre-qualified measures are called, in fact, prescriptive. They include things like lighting fixtures, lighting controls, uh, certain appliances, HVAC systems, water heating, and, and some commercial food service equipment, as, as well as others. Um, in, in terms of these programs, uh, there, are, there is a cap that is in place in terms of the amount of incentive. Uh, we do not supply incentives that would exceed the cost of the measure. So you'll find the details on what is prescriptive on the, uh, the website, the PSEG website. You can download a PDF of those things that are covered prescriptively. When, when talking about energy efficiency projects, many times the focus is on things that can be done uh, today or in the near or sometimes distant future. But right now, PSCNG is currently offering a very exciting opportunity by evaluating projects that have already been completed by their customers within the last 180 days and providing them with incentives retroactively to cover some of that investment cost. So the criteria for eligibility here remains the same as is in place for the current prescriptive measures. And like the regular program process, they can't have already received any incentives from any other program, okay? Um, this is a rolling look back. So the 180 day window starts from the day of application submission. Um, the measures themselves can be purchased before that window start date, but the installation must fall within those last 180 days. So if you were submitting an application today, that window would be 180 days uh, prior to today. All right. Okay, so, and, and this is something that Joe had mentioned uh, more specifically in terms of examples, but if you find that the prescriptive measures in our application catalog are not covering your energy efficiency technology choice, uh, there is also a custom program available to make sure that you never leave any rebate opportunity behind. Uh, and we encourage you to challenge our outreach professionals and engineers to help identify and explore those additional savings opportunities. Uh, some examples, as Joe had mentioned, for custom projects include measures that involve process improvements, uh, which conserve energy, measures that save time, reduce water consumption, or offer increased productivity at an equal or lesser efficiency consumption rate. So some of those projects, again, uh, I think to add to, to Joe's list are some complex compressed air system improvements, uh, steam system improvements, laundry ozone, or, or ozone laundry, I should say, projects that we have done, um, and smart or electrochromic windows. Uh, all are types of projects that would fall under the custom realm of energy efficiency incentive. Um, in terms of the incentive payments for custom projects, they are based on a first year energy savings. And these are all subject to post inspections. Um, sometimes there will be some spot measurement and data trending obtained just to verify those savings. The incentives that are available are 16 cents per kilowatt hour saved and $3.50 a therm saved. Now, as with the prescriptive program, the a uh, custom program does have a cap in terms of incentives, and that's that the incentives cannot exceed 50% of total project cost. Okay, another way for a customer, or another way that a customer can participate in PSE&G's energy efficiency program suite is through direct install. Um, Joe had mentioned that there's both open and closed networks. Um, Essentially, and I'll get into that in a, in a second, it's probably best to explain a little bit about direct install. It's really focused on facilities with lower energy demand 
than other facilities within PSENG service territory. Uh, many times this fits the profile of a small or medium business, but it can still apply to any facility that uses less than 200 kilowatts in demand on average over the previous 12 months. So the purpose of this program is to reduce the upfront costs of, this in, of installing energy saving equipment. Um, and, and that aim again is enhanced by something that we both mentioned already called on-bill recovery or on-bill refinance for the repayment of that remaining project cost with no interest over five years as a line item on your utility bill. Um, and I'll get into it a little bit more on a subsequent slide, but just to let you know, it is applicable uh, through these programs. Uh, in terms of how this works, the program is initiated through a free energy assessment. It's provided by an authorized program trade ally. Um, you know, we can help you identify who that trade ally might be or supply you with a list so you can uh, make your choices in terms of getting bids. Um, there is one area where you designate between an open network and a closed network. A closed network uh, of trade, uh, trade allies for direct install is provided for those that have a, a business or, or a, you know, location within an urban enterprise zone, or I should say the municipality that, that hosts an urban enterprise zone. Uh, there are select uh, trade allies for direct install that are utilized for those areas. And, and we can help you with, with who, those, who those people are contacting them um, and starting a process. But if you're outside of that municipality with an urban enterprise zone, you'd be using the open network. And again, uh, we have a list of, of those that are certified to, to provide this service. Essentially what would happen is that they would come out and do a free on-site assessment. Um, and then as a result of that assessment, a uh, proposal is generated for you, the customer, which outlines all the recommend recommendations by that trade ally. Uh, once a proposal is agreed upon and signed by the customer, uh, then the construction begins and uh, you kind of move through the process. Typically, you know, these, these projects, uh, incentives can cover uh, as much as up to 80% of project cost, but, uh, but it does vary per project. Um, once that work commences uh, and is completed, the customer would repay that remaining balance of project cost to that trade ally. Again, that remaining cost can be covered by on-bill recovery. Um, so you're really out of pocket is zero dollars and you're paying that over five years at zero interest. Um, so it, this is a, a really a fantastic program for again, a small medium business. But if, if you're with a larger company and again, you have facilities that would fall under this category of 200 kilowatts uh, demand per month on average over the last 12 months, Please give us a call and contact us, and we can get you set up with the right uh, with the right trade outlets. Okay, we also mentioned a little bit about strategic energy management, um, and this gives you the organizational tools and systems and, and processes necessary for achieving continuous energy performance improvement, uh, including optimizing exist, existing systems. So the savings are paid on a performance basis, um, and is premised on what is it. Uh, what is we're able to to actually monitor and measure and verify over the course of what is typically 12 to 18 months. So both the SEM program and retro commissioning are designed for the larger energy users. Um, let me touch on retro commissioning first, and then I'll tell you about some of the criteria there. Uh, retro commissioning, as opposed to strategic energy management, is a systematic method for investigating how and why an existing building systems are operated and maintained and identifying ways to improve your overall building performance. So it's, it's quite often a calibration of an existing system to meet present needs. Um, you know, it may be a situation where the system may have met those needs on day one when it was installed, but now because of different use, different occupancy, the, uh, the expectations are not meeting the customer's needs. And so an evaluation is done of different set points, making sure that, um, that measurements are being recorded accurately, that sensors are all accurate and operational. As I mentioned, both of these programs are focused on larger energy users um, and have a longer process timeline than uh, the typical prescriptive or even custom program because there is measurement involved. Typical customer for SEM project is in the top one to 5% of the energy consumers for PSE&G. So 
we're talking on the order of 5 million kilowatt hours or 300,000 therms in terms of consumption. Um, retro commissioning can be proportionately smaller, typically about half that size. So now we're in the 10% range of consumers. So 2.5 million kilowatt hours or 150,000 therms in terms of consumption. Just to kind of give you a feel of the types of, of opportunities and businesses that are usually participating there. Uh, we also did mention engineered solutions. So again, for very large complex projects, these are typically in the mush market, which is municipal, university, school, um, hospital, nonprofit, and some large multifamily housing uh, projects or buildings. Um, these projects, again, are typically in the 1 million plus range in terms of cost. Uh, they do include improvements to things like lighting, HVAC, chillers, boilers, control systems, domestic hot waters, water boilers. Um, so they, they do cover a very broad uh, path or, or swath of, I guess, uh, energy efficiency measures and do typically require a great deal of engineering in order to bring together uh, a project. They, they do supply a no-cost energy audit um, and that generates what is called a, a bid ready design and all costs that are associated with the installation of energy efficiency measures are covered by that program. Okay, yes, we mentioned this a couple times because we're pretty excited about it, but one of the capabilities mentioned earlier was uh, the notion of this, uh, being able to finance your project through on-bill repayment or OBR is what we will call it internally. OBR is positioned to create uh, a project cost structure that is zero dollar upfront in expenses. Um, the amount covered by, OB, uh, by OBR is the total project cost, less all incentives. So the, the project cost balance that remains after incentives have been applied is the amount that is spread out over that, that 60 month period at zero percent interest. And again, this shows up as a separate line item on your utility bill. This is just a quick example um, of what an on-bill repayment you know, could look like. Um, and again, the example here provided is uh, $10,000 with an incentive of $2,000. That $8,000 is financed. The documentation that you are supplied gives you that estimated repayment uh, amount monthly and over, and over what period. Um, essentially, the way that this works is that, well, let me tell you a little bit about what some of the requirements are first. but uh, within an OBR project, uh, there is no upper limit in terms of financing. If it does reach or exceed a million dollars, there may be some additional uh, review internally within PSCNG, but otherwise there is no cap. Um, it is subject to an Experian credit review. It's called an Experian Financial Stability Score that is reviewed, uh, but this is all done very quickly. Um, and so, you know, being able to uh, understand whether or not you're eligible for, for participation is a pretty quick process. Uh, it is eligible to all businesses, nonprofits, municipalities. Um, and again, there are some other, other criteria in terms of whether or not you do have outstanding uh, accounts receivable, receivable balances, um, but otherwise uh, a pretty quick process in terms of participation. So how do you determine whether or not your project qualifies for incentives? Um, there are some eligibility requirements for both uh, the customer and the technology or measure type. The customer must contribute to what's called the Societal Benefits Fund. This is a designated line item on your utility bill. Uh, sometimes it's called the SBC charge. Um, you must be under a commercial tariff rate uh, or rate schedule, I should say. Um, the project must result in permanent kilowatt hour and therm reduction. Um, and those measures that are installed need to be in place for at least five years or the life of the product. PSCNG does reserve the right to inspect uh, the installation location for up to three years after installation. Um, but those are generally the, the qualifiers for participation. And of course, you need to be installing and have submitted applications to the program. I know that sounds kind of weird, but sometimes we get questions about whether or not you need to actually install anything. Yes, the idea behind these incentives are to uh, provide you with some funding in order to you know, make those changes and, and start saving energy. 
Um, in terms of things that don't qualify, there, there are some things that are not handled by this program. For instance, CHP or um, combined heat and power and cogen, solar, anything that is generating electricity is not eligible through this program. There are other programs available uh, through the state that would handle these types of technologies. Uh, another area has to do with technologies that offer peak shifting. Um, this could be battery storage. It could be things like cold storage uh, in the summer that helps reduce uh, you know, usage um, in, in terms of uh, HVAC systems, but that's something that we're not, we're not uh, supporting within this particular program. Um, we also don't look at behavioral or maintenance practices. Um, and any lighting measures that are not listed on Energy Star or the DLC. The DLC is the Design Lights Consortium website. Um, in terms of the application process, uh, we utilize the DLC and Energy Star as our go-to in terms of qualifying measures. And so one of, the, one of the pieces of data and information that needs to be supplied with uh, an application is a screenshot of your product. Uh, they're listed by manufacturer, model number, from the DLC or from Energy Star that shows that what you're utilizing, what you're using is a known commodity has been reviewed by the DLC and approved. Uh, that's, that enables us to say that yes, you're installing on the lighting side uh, things that are energy efficient. Okay, in this slide we're trying to give you an idea, kind of a, a rule of thumb, if you will, in terms of uh, how you would go about uh, kind of understanding which program is best for you. So we had talked about the fact that uh, pre-qualified uh, energy efficiency equipment is covered prescriptively. Um, and again, that list is available on the website. Uh, we'll be providing you the, uh, an email address, or I'm sorry, a website address for uh, this program and its subsequent slide. And you will be given these slides uh, at the end of the presentation. Again, if it doesn't meet that prescriptive list and isn't on there, we can look at this from a custom energy efficiency program or project standpoint. And so what you're doing there is is either you or your technology vendor or installer would be supplying us with data and information about how the measure you're installing will save energy and then some modeling detail in terms of how much energy it would then be saving and again the incentives there are are based on those saved kilowatt hours in therms 16 cents uh, kilowatt, kilowatt hour saved and three dollars and fifty cents per therm saved uh, energy management again uh, if you have a larger cons you know, cons consumer or your, your facility is one of the larger consumers within PSENG's territory, um, there are some opportunities for you to take a look at what's in place currently, retrofitting, uh, the, the retro commissioning, I should say, program looking at uh, existing building systems, uh, the energy management looking for continuous uh, improvement through the optimization of systems. Uh, they are longer programs in terms of delivery. Um, and are reserved for some of our larger users. And engineered solutions on, this, on the same sort of bent. Uh, this is for larger projects, a million dollars typically uh, in cost, and, and uh, is primarily in, the, in that niche market, the municipality, university hospitals, uh, nonprofits. So just to keep that in the, in the back of your mind. And then finally, the turnkey solutions uh, would be for direct install, and again, we use small business, but again, not limited to small business. And uh, this is where your annual demand uh, on average over the last 12 months is 200 kW. Um, we would work with you to determine whether you are utilizing the open network or closed network uh, of direct install trade allies to, to complete that project. And again, by turnkey, this is, they come in, they do that assessment. Um, they provide you with a statement of work once you agree on that. Uh, uh, level of, of uh, work and upgrade, you would sign that uh, proposal, they start work, and then they are paid essentially the incentive. You would be responsible for that balance. And again, uh, not the only, but a great opportunity to utilize OBR to finance that so you have a zero dollar out of pocket uh, you know, project cost. Okay, finally, we'd like to provide you with some contact details for the programs we have mentioned today. Uh, we encourage you to reach out to any of these resources. Uh, the 800 number will connect you with an outreach professional if you'd like to talk directly with an outreach professional. Uh, the email as well. Um, 
we, we encourage you to reach out as often as, as you'd like. We uh, uh, are excited to, to hear about your projects and, and help you determine what the best program is for you. We have mentioned engineered solu uh, solutions. We do have a direct contact for you there through Michael Savage and have provided you with his email address. Uh, again, keep in, keep in mind that these are much typically much larger projects. Uh, but again, Michael is, uh, is happy to hear from you and, and see what you have uh, in mind and, and what the scope is of, of your particular project. And then at the very bottom, the bizsafe.pse.com uh, uh, web address is for the program itself. Uh, feel free to navigate through those pages and uh, you know, locate information, again, about the programs themselves. There are PDFs available there regarding the programs. Uh, also, as I mentioned, a list of the prescriptive measures you can obtain there. That's where you would also go to apply online. Um, uh, we have online applications and PDF. We encourage online, it's a little smoother, but, but either way, we'll, we'll take your information. So um, I, I think with that, that brings us to the end of our, of our formal presentation. Um, I think what we're gonna try to do now is handle some questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this slide up on the screen so everyone can review it. But um, Wayne, I, I don't know if I think you were kind of monitoring, uh, monitoring what was going on in the, in the Q&A section, so. Yes, sir. Away. So first of all, thank you, uh, uh, Jim and Joe. Um, you know, you guys touched on the topics, like I said, that our business has been talking about, you know, cost saving, energy efficiency, redundancy, um, you know, these are things that, you know, businesses need price certainty to be able to, you know, to budget uh, as these times come. So we have a very engaged crowd. We've got quite a few questions. So let me start with uh, the first one that came in. I'm unsure what program will work best for me. Who can I contact? So great opportunity to give us a call. Um, if you use the 800 number again on this page, uh, you'll be put in touch with our call center. Uh, they typically do first level uh, Q&A, if you will, but if there's something that they can't answer, they can put you in touch with the appropriate outreach professional. Essentially, outreach professionals within PSE and G's territory are divided up in a couple of different ways, but one is by area and region. So you would be asked where you're located and you would be put in touch with the appropriate outreach professional. And they can help you kind of get through what your project looks like and look for additional opportunities. Um, you know, in terms of things you may have uh, not even considered and uh, get you pointed in the right direction to make sure that you, you get the biggest incentive you can. Great. Okay. And Joe, please, um, whenever, whenever you yeah. want to in, in, interject, go ahead and do so, because otherwise I'll just... I'm sure. Now, for customers that are unsure, that, that would really be the, the best place to, to start, either phone call or PSEG energy savers at dnv.com. Uh, or you could reach out to me or, or Jim and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll put you in touch and contact with the right person. Right. Great. And you will have uh, both of their contact information, which is part of this presentation, and it'll be uh, sent to you tomorrow. Um, please explain how OBR works. This is the first time I'm hearing of this being available. Okay, so the way that OBR works currently is it is a separate application uh, from the measure application. So essentially, let's say you're doing a lighting upgrade, you would supply, we, we encourage everyone to go through pre-application process. Uh, you would fill that out and, and submit it to the program. The OBR process works in parallel, okay? So there's a separate application, it comes in, and gets that first level of review, depending on, on the level, let's say it's under a million dollars. It goes through the Experian uh, review. And at that point, there's like a yes or no sort of determination. Um, if for some reason it doesn't pass the Experian review, we do have other, other channels and methodologies for review to, to evaluate it again. But essentially then it runs and it's almost waiting for the project itself to make its way through the approval process. So I kind of have to explain how that uh, a typical prescriptive application would work. You would submit a pre-application, let's say it's just for lighting. You would be selecting all the lighting measures you're installing uh, and entering in the associated uh, savings and incentive levels. That project is submitted and let's say you've already put in the OBR then at the same time. Your lighting application will be reviewed by engineers and by our outreach coordinator, or I'm sorry, our program 
coordinators to make sure that all the paperwork is in. You need to supply different things. Um, uh, W9, if you're the customer and you're the one receiving the incentive, um, cut sheets for the technologies, um, the DLC screenshot, like I mentioned. So a number of different things that are spelled out within the application to get submitted. It gets reviewed by our engineering team. Uh, they look for any, anything, any incongruencies between, you know, what, uh, what was on the application and, and what was submitted via DLC. Uh, an inspection in most cases is a pre-inspection is done. Um, and then after all of that happens, they will approve a pre-application. And what's issued is something called a reservation letter. So the customer would receive a reservation letter saying, okay, uh, it looks like, you know, based on what you've submitted and based on our research or what we've been uh, looking at from an evaluation standpoint, you're entitled to this level of incentive. Um, and that reservation le letter really starts and kind of pulls the trigger, if you will, on construction. So now the uh, trade ally or contractor can start work and do the installation. At that same time that the reservation letter goes out, that's when you would receive that letter about, about OBR saying, yes, you're qualified for OBR. And here's the amount. It's the estimated amount based on that original scope of work. Um, and it says you're going to be paying, I think the example I had before was on a $10,000 project with $2,000 in incentives. You know, you're, you're financing 8,000, it's 133 per month over five years at 0%. That's sent out as a proposal, okay? Now construction is happening, construction is completed, a final application is submitted, and what you're doing is really just reconfirming everything that you put in in your pre-application. Maybe the project has changed in scope a little, maybe they needed to make some changes to the equipment being installed, all of that is handled with that final application. Once that gets reviewed and is completed, um, and we're ready to issue that incentive, at the same time you would receive a contract for OBR, and that's the final amount now that will be financed on bill. So it runs in parallel. It doesn't add any time to the project timeline. Uh, it's, it's typically, again, kind of waiting for the review process for the application itself. So that's how the process works. It was a lot to take in, I understand. So you know, please reach out to, to me or to Joe or contact us through the 800 number to get more details if, if you have additional questions on that. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, that's that's the, the one thing I would add, and I think we've touched on this a couple of times, you know, with the, the on bill refinancing or repayment here, there's really a good opportunity to help finance and pay for all these projects up front to get them done. And the repayment obligation is spread out over five years with no interest yeah. to on, on the customer's bill. So a lot of large utility, uh, large customers will actually look at this as off balance sheet financing. So it doesn't necessarily have to impact their their, their credit rating and, and everything so for for large customers that that's something for them to consider and again that's really driven because a lot of larger companies or companies in general just look at the utility bill as, as a standard overhead for their business great point Joe and it also helps with the price certainty aspect and for planning process uh, practices yes yeah, now, well, the dollar limit's a, a million dollars, and that's really based on the, you know, like a credit worthiness review type of standpoint. That's not mm -hmm. to say that if we had a project that was over a million dollars, we would deny that. No, it just means that we would want to just look at the entity that's that's implementing this project and just make sure that they're financially viable enough to, you know, repay the investment in essence that that PSC Engine is making. Right. And how do I know if my company will qualify for OBR? Well, currently it's through the application process. Now, that's always being evaluated. We're always trying to make sure that, you know, we are as efficient as possible and, and make things as uh, readily available as possible to the customer. Uh, currently it's through, it's through application, but we're evaluating different processes that might enable, uh, you know, something that's, that uh, can be relayed a little bit earlier. But that, that's where it is today. Great. So if a project was installed or started within 180 days, but the measures were purchased before the 180 days, does that mm -hmm. qualify? Is that does that qualify? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't remember. I, I might have mentioned it. I don't remember. But um, in terms of the 180 day look back, it's the installation window that we're looking at. So 
you may have purchased the equipment uh, previous or prior to the 180 days, but as long as the installation happens within 180, 180 days, that's what we're looking at. If I installed something back in April and received incentives from the clean energy program, can I still apply for PSE and G incentives? So the idea behind this and, and, and most energy efficiency programs is that we're trying to incent the, app, the, the installation of a measure once. I mean, we're, we're not looking at trying to duplicate or in some cases they call it double dipping where a measure has been incented more than one time. So it's just a single, single incentive uh, for the application on, or the installation of that measure. Yeah. So no. <laughs> that's the answer. Yeah, the the intent of and the purpose of all these energy efficiency programs of the state when the state was running them or now that the utilities are, are running them is really just to provide that incentive to give customers an extra jumpstart incentive uh, to, to promote energy efficiency. And, act, and another way to look at it is a lot of times energy efficient equipment and measures are a little bit more expensive than the standard measures. So that incentive closes that gap. That's really the intent mm -hmm. of our programs here. Right. Um, if a project was installed or started within 180 days, but the measures were purchased before the 180 days, does that qualify? I, th I, I think, yes, I think we might have touched on that when the answer is yes. Again, we're looking at installation window. So, with, as long as it's happened, it's been installed in the last 180 days, that's what we're looking for. And if I use the 180 day look back, can I still use the OBR? It's a good question. So the, the OBR is available. Um, it would just go through a different sequence of steps, meaning you would not have the, the pre-application capability. Um, and people go through the pre-application uh, just to make sure that what they're installing is going to meet the program specifications and requirements. So it, it enables you to ensure that yes, you know, the program has seen what we're installing, they recognize it, and I, now I have a letter that says res, uh, incentives have been reserved. In the case of a 180 day look back, you're going to final. It's already been installed, right? So we're going to the final status where you would be submitting that application. At the same time, you could submit that OBR application. And now, instead of getting a proposal, you'd be getting that final contract for repayment along with the uh, the incentive at the very end of the process. So you can do it. It just goes through. It's just a like a uh, compacted uh, process, if you will. So our fabulous woman behind the scene, behind the curtain, Danielle, did put uh, Jim and Joe's email in, in the chat, but again, that will be uh, meet, uh, emailed out to you. Just want to um, give uh, another second or two if there are any other questions. Um, I know uh, Jim and Joe covered a lot of ground here, um, and energy, as we said, is it's so critical to businesses. So. You know, when you stated in the beginning, you know, that's uh, through your organization here, that's something you hear about all, all the time. You know, I would encourage the uh, folks on this webinar, you know, whenever you're thinking about it, changing any kind of equipment, upgrades, buying something new that uses energy, reach out to us. We're, we're here to help you work through that, that process and try and make you more energy efficient and uh, obtain all the benefits that we, that we talked about over the last uh, 45 minutes or so. Okay. Taxes, healthcare, and energy, always, always in the top yep. three to five of, of concerns. Last year or two, there were some other concerns around business certainty and, and different stuff, as you can understand. But those three topics every year, major concerns. So couldn't agree more. This is a great opportunity for businesses. No. All right. Well, I don't see any other, uh, other questions. So thanks again. Uh, don't forget, all of you will be receiving a recording of today's webinar and the PowerPoint slides via email. And lastly, when you close out of the webinar, a survey will come up on your screen that we hope you will fill out so we can understand how to best uh, 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 provide you important information in the web uh, webinar format. I do want to remind everybody our next event, the Human Resource Council meeting, 
Workplace 2022, Managing Employee Leave and Legal Implications of Remote Work in the COVID-19 Era will be played uh, Wednesday, February 2nd. Is that next Wednesday already? Jesus, at 9, at 9 a.m. So feel free to register for that at our website. So um, once again, uh, I, I just want to thank uh, Joe and, and Jim. You know, they did a great job of dissecting some very technical information and making it understandable um, to help us realize the savings that are out there for businesses. Um, you know, got to take advantage of them. I, I, I say it all the time. If you have a gym membership and you just have that thing on your keychain, you never go to the gym, you're not going to see results, right? Mm -hmm. So checking to see what you're eligible for and the incentives that are out there. I mean, this is really, you know, significant for businesses. So yeah. with that, again, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Jim and, and Joe. And, and once again, from me, from Wayne Staub and NJBIA, we'd like to thank everybody for attending. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully we can provide more resources for you as, as you move through navigating the, the business world. Stay warm, hopefully not too much snow, and we'll, we'll see everybody soon. All right, take care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.